Hello, everyone. I'm Lindsay Dow, founder and CEO of Tetricus Labs. It is such a privilege to be here today, not just because it's an amazing, beautiful event, but also because by every right, I shouldn't be here at all. And so the One Mind team asked me to first start out and tell my story, how I got here, and how I almost didn't. Um, I was a bright and curious child. That's me. Uh, I love my parents. I love nature. But when I turned 11, my world started to close in on me. I lost my curiosity. Playdates with friends and after-school activities became moments of panic for me, where I tried to hurt myself so I wouldn't have to go out. And I increasingly locked myself in my room, binging, starving myself, and getting more and more involved in my own elaborate fantasies and withdrawn from the world. When I was 14, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, and that began a long journey of diagnosis and doctors and medications and hospitalizations. I graduated from Yale by the skin of my teeth and uh, went into investment banking. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I became increasingly suicidal. Um, dropped out of job after job until I finally gave up on work and then gave up on leaving my bed. And when I was 24, my doctor told me, that's it, we've tried everything. There's nothing left to try and there's not really a recovery in sight. Luckily, I'm incredibly stubborn, so I tried one more doctor, and she diagnosed me with borderline personality disorder. And I enrolled in an 11-week, 11-month intensive program, and by the end of it, I started to have my life open up slightly, and then rapidly. Within six months of leaving the hospital, I was COO of a successful startup, went from there to get my MBA at Yale, and then went on back to the field that I thought was my kryptonite, investment banking. And, uh, at, after a year, my boss came to me and said, you know, Lindsay, you're one of the most calm, cool, collected bankers we've ever had, and your level of emotional stability is such stress relief to the people around you in moments of crisis. <laughs> like, okay, I think I won my battle with mental illness. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, I was also really angry, I'll be honest, because Quite honestly, had I listened to every other doctor I saw, and there were dozens, not only would I not have won, but I might have been dead by now. Borderline personality disorder affects 5 million people, 1.6% of the US population. On average, it's incredibly deadly. People attempt suicide three times in their life with borderline. And it took me 10 years to get an accurate diagnosis. So I've dedicated the rest of my life and my company to building systems where we can actually precisely allocate treatment and diagnosis to patients the first time around. So to do that, I took, went back to first principles and thought, okay, what does a psychiatrist actually do? <laughs> I'm not gonna win artistic awards, um, but to me there are three key tasks. It's to observe the patient, to collect a whole host of different types of data about them so that you can do step two, a statistical analysis effectively, to use that data to predict what treatment they'll respond best to and then finally, deliver that treatment with care and compassion and hope the patient gets better. The problem, as I see it, is that two of the three tasks we're asking human psychiatrists to do are things that humans are very bad at. Where we have weak and biased memories, we're terrible at statistics, but we are excellent at connecting with patients and being compassionate. So the solution seems clear. We need to build a single system for patients where computers do what they do best and humans do what they do best. We use software to collect a varied source of data about patients and store it. We use machine learning to take that data and predict how treatments, uh, how they're going to respond to each treatment. And then we use that to enable the human clinicians to actually deliver the highest quality of care possible. And that's what we're trying to do at Tetricus Labs. Now, this is probably fairly obvious, and we're definitely not the first group to have thought of it, so why doesn't it exist today? And the answer is that building this system requires solving three very important problems across three different disciplines and integrating them into a single product that patients can use. First, we have to figure out what data we need to collect um, and make sure that that data actually predicts treatment response. Luckily, my co-founder, Dr. Phil Corlett in the audience, uh, spent the last 20 years of his career, he's right there, uh, spent the last 20 years of his career at Yale answering exactly that question. And he actually was uh, made a One Mind Rising Star 10 years ago in 2013, uh, supporting that breakthrough work. Second, 
we have to use that data to predict treatment response, and that's a machine learning problem. And luckily, we've recruited the guy, Sean McCurdy, Dr. Sean McCurdy, who used to run the group at Pinterest responsible for building the algorithms to decide what ad you should see to have each user of Pinterest have the best response to the ad. And we're using the same exact algorithms to determine what treatments a patient should get to have the best response to treatment. As proof of concept for that, we asked a non-clinical population, over 1,000 people, to tell us how they respond to alcohol and marijuana. As you all probably know, there's pretty varied responses to alcohol and marijuana, and we had 80% average prediction accuracy through our machine learning model in predicting an individual's response. Um, when you compare that to recent studies that have shown that doctors are worse than random at matching patients with treatments, and 60% of patients fail two or more treatments before they find one that works, while that's not an apples-to-apples -apples number, it gives us a lot of hope that there's a huge amount of improvement that we can make with our machine learning model on the current standard of care. And finally, patients actually have to get the treatments. And they have to get them from humans, I believe, personally. And so what we have to do is build a system that actually enables those humans to deliver care responsibly using our tools to improve the quality. And so to that end, we are launching two hospital pilots later this year where we're going to learn how to integrate our tools into the clinical workflow to do precise treatment recommendation. And we're about to launch our first um, consumer-facing product to support patient navigation um, for patients and their families that are looking to get diagnosed and treated for personality disorders like me. So with that, if there's one thing you actually take away from my presentation today, it's that I don't believe there will be a breakthrough in the quality of care for mental illness without organizations like OneMind. Because as you can see from our platform, there's no one discipline that can solve the problem. You need to integrate the wisdom of lived experience the innovation of academia, and the scale and financial sustainability of for-profit enterprise to actually get a solution that works in reality. And so thank you guys all for being here and supporting that mission. It's so important to me and to all of you, I'm assuming. And I look forward to talking to you more during the wine tasting. Thank you. Thank you.